He's in a seated position, right? Correct. You ever do it standing? I do. It's your first problem. In a seated position, everything is written and that's how we close. Don't ever present numbers standing. We close on our seat, we, we sell on our feet. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, I noticed a couple things that are concerning to me. I told you if I found something concerning, I would let you know. Where can we sit? Is this where we're gonna sit? And I'm gonna sit here with you just like this. I'm gonna set you here, and by the way, just so everybody's aware, if you're ever in a seated position, ever in any industry with somebody, you write it down. You get knee to knee with them. You close face to face. You, you never present standing up. Rule number one, no numbers ever get presented standing up. How much is it? Well, there's a couple different ways we can go to really explain it to you. Where's a place we can sit down real quick? Because I want to explain it in case you have any questions. I want you to be able to interrupt me. Is that okay? Where can we sit? See, move them, shift them. Where are we going? Living room? We going to the showroom floor? We going to the F&I office? We're going over here. Can we sit down over here like this? Does that make sense? You guys feel me? Say rule number one, if there's ever any money involved, always sit down when you're presenting the money. Okay, how many times have you said um? How you doing, Andy Ellie? What's your name? Sam. Sam, nice to meet you. Sam, tell me what we got going on here. I, mean, I know why you called out, you got a mesquite tree, but talk to me. How many trees we got on the property? Is there any more damaged trees? What's going on? No. Let's go check them out. By the way, how long you lived here? Five years? Nice, man. Does this tree mean a lot to you? They're beautiful. You know how long it takes to grow a mesquite tree? Let me see the size of this thing. Let's go check it out. Hey, do I care about his property? Do I care about the home? Am I excited to see what he's got? Yeah. Listen to me. Order taker, tour guide, or closer? Okay, now listen. Here's my goal. Do I want to be the person that you want to spend your money with? Yep. Yeah, that's who I want to be. You came to this guy's house. Do you think he plans on being your buddy? Do we need him to be your buddy? Okay, so he doesn't plan on being your buddy but we're gonna make him our buddy. Okay, do you make people your buddy by acting like a buddy? Yeah. Andy Elliott, how you doing, man? What's your name? Sam. Sam, nice, I spoke to you on the phone. Nice to meet you, buddy. All right, so talk to me. Where are we going? Front yard, backyard? You you lead the way, you're the boss, you're in charge. Let's go. Backyard, let's roll. Can we go to the house? Uh, yeah. Go around side, do we take my shoes off? What am I doing? I'm being polite. I care about it. Do we take my shoes off? Are we good? Okay, cool, I love it, man. It's your house, you're the boss. All right, what do we got here? Man, nice yard, love the house. By the way, that's the tree, beautiful tree. By the way, while I'm out here today, if I see some other things that look concerning, can I, can I tell you about them? Yeah. Is, that a, is that okay? Yeah. What am I doing? My upsell is ass right away. Okay, why? Who's the, who's the expert? Who's the authority? Who's the trusted guy? All right, so what did I tell you guys I would teach you today? How to be a, a master communicator. Now, now listen, I want you to understand, a master communicator is something that makes it easy to say yes to. That, that means whatever I say, it's easy for you to say yeah. It makes it hard to say no to. That means when I tell you what I want you to do, it's impossible for you to say no to me. And then I make it your idea. We're missing the make it your idea part. As a finance person, it's your job to set up the sale and make it the client's idea. Thank you so much for coming back here today. Number one, the salesman told me you're one of the nicest customers he's had all year. So that's amazing. I can't wait to help you guys out. We're gonna sign a little bit of paperwork. Now, before we do that, there's something called risk transfer, okay? And that's the department I handle. And this is basically the opportunity at this point in time where we can transfer the risk if anything breaks um, to the warranty company. So if something breaks, they'll pay for it. Does that make sense? Cool. Now, how many working pieces do you think there's on a machine on the car? You're buying a 2020 model. How many working pieces do you think that they're on their car? 5,000, thousands, 30,000 working pieces on a machine, 30,000. They make these cars pretty in depth now. Now the biggest thing is if something goes out on this car, these 30,000s, it's not a matter of if something's gonna break, which I'm sure you're looking at the number, it's when. The question is when it breaks, who is gonna pay for it? So I wanna give you some information and this will be the time that we decide who handles the risk, you or the warranty company. Is that fair? You feel me framing him? Have I asked him to buy anything? No. I just told them we're gonna make a decision who's gonna handle the risk. Risk transfer, that's all we're doing. Because the average per hour labor to put your car in the service department is $200 per hour. That's labor, it's not including a part. The average car goes into the service department for five hours, which means it would be $1,000 in labor. The average part is anywhere between $500 to $600. Let's say it's $500 plus $200 for a diagnostic. Just to have your car in the shop for one time is $1,700. Now, I'm not the best at math, but if I was to take 1,700, if it happened one time in a year, divided by that by 12 months in a year, that's about $120 a month in a small maintenance payment that you'd have to add. Does that make sense? For $450, for only $50 difference, 
I can actually put a full warranty on this vehicle where the risk transfer will take these 30,000 working pieces on the machine and will transfer that over to the warranty company. So if something happens, when you come in, you don't have to worry about this and they'll take care of it. And we know that it's not a matter of if something's gonna break, but when, the question is when it breaks, who wants to pay for it? Would you like to transfer all the risk over to the warranty company at this point? So if something breaks, you can walk in, hold the keys in the air, we'll take care of the car, give you something to drive and fix it. Or do you want to handle that and if something happens, you just go back here and figure it out. Would you like me to handle it? Okay, you guys get that? It's risk transfer. What do we do in selling? Guys, do you understand he's not selling me anything? His job is to help me. His job is to get me interested, number one. If you're gonna call call somebody, there has to be a point in which you say something that's interesting to them. I'm, he's just pitching me. I'm not negative. I'm just saying he's pitching me. Guys, can you withdraw money out of the bank account if you don't deposit money into it? No, you can't withdraw that money if you don't deposit money. Some of you guys are like this. I'm like, that's why you're broke. <laughs> you keep trying to pull money out, you're overdrafted. You ain't putting that in. Hey, what's going on? This is Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. I was reviewing your account. I need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Yes. There's the first yes. Beautiful. Hey, number one, you still have the 2019 Toyota Corolla you bought from us back in 2020. You still got it? Still do. Beautiful. The question number two that I was going to ask you, my general manager wanted me to personally reach out. If you still have the vehicle, he wanted me to ask you one question. If he was willing to offer you more money, more money than what your car was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Could I tell you? Yeah. Is he saying yes? Make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, make it the client's idea every single time. Is he saying no or yes? How am I doing that? Well, number one, I'm trained. Communication is the disconnect between people spending more money and then people not spending money. The way we communicate stuff with them.